Hi, it's Corrine, and I have been asked several times how to determine how big to print and cut out your elements when working with digital paper packs. So I thought it would just be um, simple to show a demonstration that will hopefully help you understand how big you want to print and cut your um, different embellishments with your paper pack. So I have a couple of rectangles here, and what I'm currently working on is a mini album. And my mini album pages are five and a quarter by seven and a quarter inches tall. So the first thing I do is I draw out a box that's going to be the size of my page. And then I fill it in with the color or the pattern paper that I'm going to be using. And this example here is an album that I'm currently working on. It's from Knitwit Collections called Babies First. And on one of my pages, I am going to be using a photo mat. So this one here represents my photo mat that is six and an eighth by four and an eighth. So the mom can put a four by six photo on this. So again, this is the first thing that I do is I prepare what my page is going to look like. So I'm going to select both of those, go to my open align window and select center. And that perfectly centered my mat, my photo mat, on my page. So I'm going to group those and now I can move them around. So the next thing, so that's how you can determine your um, paper size that you want to print out. Or you can just print it on an 8.5 by 11 and then cut it down to the size that you need. I do not do that because it saves ink if you don't do it that way. So now let's use an example and I will go grab a couple of elements, again from the same collection, which is Babies First. This is an adorable collection, by the way. So now to determine my elements, I simply do the same thing. I just open it up on my program, and when you select it, you're going to get these, these little boxes around here. You just want to grab, if you were to grab the middle one and move it over, it's going to move just the width of it. So if you want to move it and keep it proportionate how it is, you want to grab one of the corner boxes and just drag it up or down. They come fairly large when you order the paper pack, and the reason for that is you can print them out and cut them out that large if you want, and they're going to look great, or you can also make them smaller and you're not going to lose any of the detail on them. It's still going to be a great image. So again, if I'm putting this bear in the corner of the page, I'm just going to simply drag it to the size that I think looks proportionate on this page, which to me, this looks perfect. So now let's say we're going to use a label and we want the label to maybe go on the side of the page. I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'm just going to drag it to what I think looks proportional. And if I were doing a page just like this, I'd be happy with both this label and this bear. So then I would simply move them onto my mat and do a print and cut like you normally do. Another thing I'd like to show um, is, for an example, let me move these out of the way, is say this is another page that I'm working on, the same album. So again, this is five and a quarter by seven and a quarter. I also determine what I want pockets to look like. So I'm going to be using craft paper so I put the craft color on this, and then I also filled in a mat for the front of my pocket with the pattern paper. Again, all just to decide what I like and what proportions I like. So if I were going to, say, add a word, I'm grabbing the letters for the word baby, So let's just say I took my time and lined them up, which I won't take the time to do just yet. I can go through and select all four of these. I can group them either by right clicking or down here in the bottom left corner. I've already grouped them. And now I can hold it up to my pocket and size it to, again, what I think looks good on this. So say I wanted it to go in the middle of the page, I would probably do it a little bit larger. Once I was happy with that, I can ungroup them and have them cut out individually, or I can 
put a box around them to cut them out. So one more example is, let's say you're working on a standard A2 sized card. So the front of my card is going to be five and a half by four and a quarter. So I drew out a box and made it five and a half by four and a quarter. I filled it in with my favorite paper pack. This is again from Knitwit Collections called Authentic. And now I want a mat to go on the front of that. I would make that a little bit smaller, so a quarter smaller, or actually I did a half inch smaller on both the width and the height, so I made it to five and three and three quarters. And now I can grab both of these, go back up to my align, hit center, and it's going to center it perfectly for me. So let me group that. And now say I wanna go grab an element from that collection. So let me just open that up here. Let's say I want to put a bow and a clock. So I would just simply drag it to what I think looks good and place it on here and same with the bow. So I hope that makes sense to you. One last thing I'd like to say is when I get a brand new paper collection, a digital paper collection, it comes with tons of elements if you purchase it through Knitwit Collections. So as you can see here, there are tons of elements. This may be a tip that helps you. I like to, the first thing I do once I upload all the images into my program, my Silhouette program, is I go ahead and open them up. So I'm just simply going to click on several of them. I do all of them at one time, or I should say most of them at one time. So here I've grabbed two flowers and two labels. And then I go through and trace them all at the same time. This way when I'm going to use them in a project, they're already, they already have cut lines on them. So now you can see there is a cut line for this. I would group those together, center them, group them together, and now it's ready to go. So when I'm working on a project, I already have all my elements with cut lines around them. So maybe that might help you um, when you're working on a digital program. So here's an example. I have them all under my Knitwit traced elements. So if I were to click on this, it'll take just a minute because there are a lot of elements. And I separate them into like more like labels and then flowers, things like that. You can separate them however you'd like to. And now here are all of my elements that I tend to use over and over. I always trace all the flowers. And if you look, they have the red trace lines around them. So I hope that helps somebody out. If you have any other questions, please let me know. And thanks so much for watching. I'll put a link to Knitwig Collections in the description box below.